The most annoying problem when visualizing the data as heat maps is the data being flipped, rotated, or reversed in a strange way. When all you want to do is to create a heat map that has a one-to-one -one correspondence with the input image matrix. For someone new to plotting, this might cost a considerable amount of time to fix this or to find out what the problem is. And I've been there and done that. When I was trying to plot publication quality figures for my paper and a thesis, I came across this issue and I learned something new, which I wanted to share with you in this video. We will do this in two easy steps. To demonstrate this, I will use Julia's Kyra Makey plotting library, as well as the PyPlot from Julia, which is basically a Python MyPlotlib. And I'll show you how to plot the large images, so very large matrices, efficiently, also using Julia Kyra Makey library. Heat maps are a very powerful tool for visualizing data in a clear format. Whenever you need to identify trends, patterns, correlation, or activity, heat maps are your friend. They also play a significant role in machine learning as a tool for data exploration and a method for interpreting complex models, as well as in medical image processing, as an example. Knowing how to use them confidently can save you a lot of time. This is an example from my research project, and it's animated heat map of an array of spins on a lattice that I represent as arrows, and the background is in black and white, representing the direction in which the spin is pointing. So if it's black, it's reversed. If it's white, it has the original orientation. So basically incoming image is the array of plus and minus ones and output is as such. Well, now imagine if that black and white heat map is off, if it has not preserved the original orientation. So this might lead to wrong interpretation results and generally just be annoying. I'll show you exactly how I've done this black and white heat map, but first let's go through a more straightforward example. So let's take a look at the Kyra Mackey plotting first. This is a very nice plotting library in Julia for anything that has to be really complex and publication quality. So that's what I chose to do. And I tried many different ways. Anyway, let the image matrix be like, like this. So five by five, the value is going from one to 25. And we want the one to be the lightest color on the heat map and 25 be the darkest color on the heat map. So I'm setting figure, setting axis, and using the heat map function from Kyra Mickey to plot. So I'm passing the matrix like this, setting the color. This loop here is responsible for the annotated values inside the matrix on top of the heat map to make uh, everything that's happening during the plotting very clear. So let's see how that looks like. That's what we get. So as you see, columns up here have become rows here. And this is not quite what we want. So we want to make sure that columns stay columns. And one way to do it is to transpose the incoming matrix. So let's do that. Everything here is the same as before, except for this part where I transposed my original matrix. And that gives me the following image. So now the columns are columns, rows are rows, but we can notice one thing. The order is different. So the y-axis seems to be reversed. So the lightest color is on the bottom while it should be on the top, and the darkest is on the top while it should be in this corner here in the bottom. There is a very handy attribute in Kyra Mickey which allows you to reverse the y-axis. And I've done exactly that here. So everything is before the transposed matrix is used in plotting the heat map. But then I used this attribute y reversed equals true. And then gives you the output as desired. Now, this is exactly as the original matrix. One is on the top left, 25 is the darkest and on the bottom right. One thing I wanted to mention before you guys ask questions is why J is first. So for someone new to Julia, Julia is column major. And so accessing the values in columns first is much faster for any loops that you do. So that's why J is first. Otherwise it doesn't affect anything in here. Now let's take a look at the pie plot. So pie plot in Julia is basically uh, an access to Julia's mypplotlib uh, in Python. Um, and specifically this. So PyCall up here 
is a package that provides the ability to directly call any Julia, um, any Python functions from within Julia. So that's one thing that we've done here. And then the second one is the PyPlot. So the PyPlot module for Julia is the module that provides an interface to the matplotlib plotting library from Python. So you can use even Python's documentation for any kind of modifications you need to make uh, because basically it's just matplotlib inside of Julia. So that out of the way, let's take a look. This is our incoming matrix, figures and axis are set, and I'm using imshow to do that part of plotting. As before, we do the annotations to make everything super clear, and let's see what we've got. I didn't need to do any modifications. PyPlot did preserve the original layout of the matrix. All the values are where they're supposed to be, and the colors all match, which is great. But the reason it does this is because by default, imshow sets the origin in the top left corner. You have the option to change the origin. You can set it to the center or whichever corner you want. But the reason I chose to still go with Kairamaki is because, as you notice, the images are much clearer, much nicer looking aesthetically in Kairamaki. And this is what I like about it. And another thing that I promised you to show is that if you have very large matrices or images represented as matrices, it's much more efficient to plot them uh, with other function in Kairamaki other than heat map. It's called images or image. So that image function uh, allows you to plot very large image matrices. And the major difference here is that the color is more like a gradient instead of being the pixelated type of color. But other than that, it's the same thing. And now I'm gonna show you how I created those black and white animation maps that are very particular to my research. Let's suppose my incoming matrix is just a set of plus and minus ones. And this is just a single snapshot of the system's state uh, for my case for my simulations. And in the animation, I have a series of these snapshots uh, saved as an animation. But let's just look at this one single snapshot. If I were to plot it as it is as a heat map, um, I'll get this. And if you notice, the first column here is not at all what it is in here. So minus one, minus one, one, minus one has become a row. Now I'm gonna show you the three snapshots side by side uh, how the modifications that I'm making, well, transposing the matrix and reversing the y-axis helps me to get the original image back. So I'm setting the figure three axis. Uh, in the third one, I have the y-reverse equal true. The second one just shows the transposed but not y-reversed. And additions, and this is the outcome. So the original image does not look like it at all. Now with the transpose uh, applied, the columns have become columns as before, but the y-axis is flipped. And so once you flip the y-axis again, you get the original image back. So all you need to do to make sure your data is visualized correctly is first of all, to determine which library you're gonna use for your plotting and look into how the defaults are and how the plotting is normally going. What is X, what is Y data in your heat maps. And then you can decide what to do with your input arrays. Do you need to transpose them? And also if you need to reverse X axis or Y axis, or maybe you need to change the origin. In Python, there is an option to do that in Matplotlib. So know your data, know your plotting libraries, and you should be good. And if you're curious how I created those arrows on the lattice, I created a video that explains it in very much detail right here. Bye.